so we know about ground motion parameters a lot now uh, we know that uh, pga or pgd or pgv can be used even mmi can also be used as a hazard parameter uh, but it is a qualitative parameter pga has a very fixed uh, definition so uh, seismic hazard will be actually ground shaking hazard in our case and we define it like this i have already defined it several times the probability of occurrence of potentially destructive ground shaking at a given site within a given time interval so you have to for example if you say that pga equal to 0.5 second uh, 0.5 g you have to tell that this is for how many years in future this number will work and for what particular site you give me this number right so these kind of maps which give us the intensity and location of future earthquake in terms of any ground motion parameter like pga or sa or any other parameter these are called hazard maps they are one of the results of pshe hazard assessment so this is a world map world hazard map uh, and it is in the form of mmi not pga right so it gives a qualitative picture of which area is higher have high hazard and which area have low hazard right so you can see that dark red means uh, mmi 9 and above and uh, yellow means mmi 4 6 7 for example white means mmi 0 uh, mmi 5 and 5 and below right so dark red are high hazard areas uh, and uh, this map is uh, actually used uh, the mmi as the hazard parameter another example of a hazard parameter this is in the form of pga now this is the hazard map of thailand and uh, once you perform the pshe you also have to define the hazard in the probabilistic terms so uh, each number on this contour map is a pga value at any site Uh, but that pga corresponds to a 10% probability of exceedance in the next 50 years right so which means that uh, there is a 90% chance that if you use this map in the design of new buildings you will be safe for next 50 years but there is a 10% chance that you may experience a pga more than this one right so this 10% is an acceptable risk kind of thing this is the hazard map for uh, us previously we used to only plot contours now we use colors to show different pga values so this shows uh, the contours and shades also uh, these are pga numbers corresponding to the same definition this is one of the earlier maps for us hazard maps so since the uh, primary use of these maps is uh, for the seismic analysis of buildings so for simplicity we also sometime make zones based on the pga value ranges but now we don't make zones when we have the ss and s1 map we directly give the number at each pixel or each point right so no need to make zones anymore previously this concept was there in uh, and this was last appeared in ubc 97 but from ibc 2000 onwards we no, no more make zones out of the hazard parameter this is another example of uh, hazard map conducted from different studies right so the first a map is from bcp 2007 uh, this uh, color is showing the pga ranges right so either you make a contour or you make color ranges same information uh, another study from geological survey of pakistan in 2006 uh, gave us this map obviously when you will see the actual pshe process you will see that it is all approximate there are several assumptions which you have to make during the whole process about uh, the about the seismic sources modeling and everything so therefore each study may result in a different number but obviously as we are moving forward the pshe methodology is becoming more and more advanced and therefore we are getting more and more clear picture of the hazard right so it's not a fixed deterministic thing PSHA is an approximate science of quantifying the future earthquake. So C is from PMD study. Then last one is the G shape. It is an international study, 
uh, and Pakistan was part of that. So, four different studies in one figure uh, and uh, although the, the hazard uh, pattern is somehow same, we have a high hazard region in the north and then in the, uh, in the Balochistan region. Uh, but the numbers differ depending upon the PSHA methodology used and what was the input data used for each study, right? So the number may differ. Uh, this is uh, another study, uh, fifth study. Actually, I have taken all these maps from this particular study, and uh, this also conducted PSHA, and it uh, provided us a better picture of the hazard. So. Uh, the seismic hazard assessment process is not only for structural engineers, it has several other applications. One of the application is that we use these numbers for design, design of new buildings and evaluation of existing buildings. Uh, but uh, the other applications may include for example, planning for societal and economic emergencies, then uh, setting priorities for mitigation of seismic risk by disaster management authorities, insurance analysis. Uh, this hazard map is the basic input in the earthquake insurance analysis, right? So, our scope is this one, but it has many other applications. Actually, if you want to do anything about earthquake, hazard map should be your starting point. You should know that what level of an earthquake can occur in which areas. So, this information is the starting point of every policy actually.